Good morning, my name is Horacio Duarte and I'm presenting this on behalf of my co-authors. I have no conflicts of interest to declare. Elevated maternal viral load increases the risk of vertical transmission of HIV to infants. Two interventions that can potentially improve maternal viral suppression, which are the focus of this study, are number one, improving adherence to maternal viral load testing guidelines, and number two, mentor-mother programs. Viral load testing can potentially improve overall rates of viral suppression by identifying individuals who have unsuppressed viral load and then prompting adherence counseling. However, gaps in the viral load testing cascade have been well documented in both adults and children. In recent years, various experts have called attention to breast pregnant and breastfeeding women as a priority population for receiving viral load testing. However, to our knowledge, no model-based analyses have quantified uh, the potential reductions in vertical transmission that can occur with high levels of adherence to viral load testing guidelines. As for mentor mother programs, uh, the precise details of these interventions can vary depending on the setting and context, but at their core, mentor mothers are peer supporters who provide adherence counseling and retention support services and studies to date suggest that they have the potential to improve retention and care. There have been some model-based analyses that have evaluated uh, potential impact on reducing vertical transmission by uh, improving retention and care for mothers, but none of these have compared this impact to uh, the potential effects of viral load testing. So the objective of the study was to evaluate uh, potential reductions in vertical transmission due to viral load testing and mentor mother programs in a high HIV prevalence African setting. To do this, we developed a microsimulation model that's designed to evaluate interventions for preventing vertical transmission. Briefly, the model is designed uh, to do a few things. First, it generates a hypothetical cohort of women living with recently acquired HIV. It then simulates their disease progression and care from the time of conception through 18 months of breastfeeding postpartum. And finally, it simulates the risk of vertical transmission both during the peripartum and postpartum periods. With this model, we simulated several different strategies. First, with a beginning with a scenario that implements the standard of care, but without viral load testing or a mentor mother program. For all strategies, we assume that dolutegravir-based ART serves as the first-line regimen. And for this population uh, that we focused on uh, with recently acquired HIV, we assumed that ART initiation occurs at the first antenatal clinic visit at five months gestation. Over the course of the follow-up period through 18 months postpartum, we assume that the risk of virologic failure is 9% and the risk of loss to follow-up is 25%. We then simulated two viral load testing strategies, one with 50% adherence to guidelines and the next with 100% adherence to guidelines. This analysis was designed to be broadly applicable to a wide range of African contexts. For this particular analysis, uh, the viral load testing frequency we, we implemented was based on Kenyan Ministry of Health guidelines, which recommend having an initial viral load test three months after ART initiation, and then every six months until breastfeeding is complete. So when we say 50% adherence to guidelines, that means that 50% of the mothers actually receive the viral load tests. Second, we assume that when a mother well, was identified as having unsuppressed viral load, with a viral load test, uh, we assume that 50% of them achieve resuppression uh, with adherence counseling. And finally, if a mother was found to have unsuppressed viral load still at the repeat test three months after the initial test, uh, we did not model a switch to second line art because of the current uncertainty about what that second line, line art regimen should be after failing dolutegravir. Next, we simulated a strategy with mentor mothers 
uh, but no viral load testing. Here we assume that the mentor mother program would reduce the risk of loss to follow up from 25% to 10%. Altogether, we simulated six strategies. Uh, the first four are the ones I just explained. And then we simulated two more strategies that combine mentor mother with one of the viral load testing scenarios. This table uh, presents a summary of the results for these six strategies. In the first row, we have the no testing, no mentor mother um, strategy. And I wanna call attention to the first, the second to last column. This provides the percentage of infants who eventually acquired HIV at some point during the follow-up period. And the final column tells us um, the relative reduction in the number of infants who acquired HIV during the, the follow-up period. We had three major findings. First, we found that there was a limited impact of viral load testing. So even with uh, perfect testing, uh, we found that we should expect only a 0.5% uh, reduction in, in the total number of infants who acquire HIV relative to the no testing strategy. Next, we found that the mentor mother strategy um, should, is expected to have a markedly larger impact than viral load testing. Uh, we found, um, we projected an 11.7% reduction in the number of infants with HIV acquisition compared to only 0.5% reduction with perfect viral load testing. And this, these results correspond to the differences in the proportion of mothers who have viral suppression at nine months postpartum, 90% uh, with mentor mothers and 83% with perfect viral load testing. And third, we found that concurrent implementation of both strategies has the greatest uh, potential to reduce um, vertical transmission with an expected 12.2% relative reduction with mentor mother and perfect viral load testing combined. In order to understand uh, the limited impact we found of viral load testing, it's important to remember a couple of key things. The first is that viral load testing can potentially only improve outcomes for mothers who are still retained in care as retention in care is a requirement for actually receiving a viral load test. And the second is that amongst those who are retained in care, it can only help those that have an unsuppressed viral load. Given the relatively low rates of virologic failure altogether, this means that uh, from the beginning, we should only expect that a relatively small proportion of mothers have the potential to even benefit from viral load testing. Um, the second point is, is illustrated by a couple of one-way sensitivity analyses that we conducted. Uh, the first bar shows that the higher the rate of failure, the greater the potential relative reduction that can be attributed to viral load testing is. And similarly, the higher the proportion of women with unsuppressed viral load who achieve resuppression, the greater the potential impact of viral load testing in reducing vertical transmission. However, even in both of these cases, the, the total impact is still relatively small. In contrast, uh, because mentor mother programs intervene further upstream in the cascade of care by acting to help retain mothers in care, uh, this type of intervention has the potential to uh, benefit a larger proportion of mothers. Um, and so more mothers can uh, reap the benefits of art and achieve viral suppression. This study does have limitations. It's important to remember that the relative reductions um, presented here are amongst uh, mothers who initiate art in the first place, rather than overall reductions in vertical transmission in a population. And second, this study focused on a population of women with recently acquired HIV. And so more work is needed to evaluate these interventions amongst um, art experienced mothers who have already initiated art prior to the time of conception. So in conclusion, both viral load testing and mentor mother programs can contribute to reductions in vertical transmission. However, we found that the mentor mother programs uh, have a potential to have markedly larger impact than viral load testing. And finally, concurrent implementation of both interventions has the greatest potential for reducing vertical transmission. 
Finally, I'd like to thank uh, the Pharma Foundation and the NIH for supporting this work. Thank you very much. Thank you.